What is up, guys? Welcome to a very special edition of Roleplay One Shots. My name is JP McDaniel, and I'm joined by the entire Fire DM D cast, as I can hear myself, from Real Roleplay. We've got the, the Space Master, we've got the <laughs> Game Master, and we've got the Dungeon Master, whose camera is not working right now. <laughs> so we're <laughs> just going to deal with it. Master. It's the ghost of the Dungeon Master. So uh, we'll do some quick <laughs> introductions. By the way, Neil's cam died earlier this afternoon. Uh, he's not. His camera's actually usually much better than this. So, Neil, let's start off with you, just because everyone's staring at your webcam, and I know you're scrambling and not paying attention to the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> How's, How's stuff going, going man? Uh, good. I've been doing... Basically, a lot of Divinity. Lots and lots and lots of Divinity. And it's the best game that's ever been created for a computer system. <laughs> wow. It's, it's a you're, long game, then. You're still it's high praise. It. I think I've sunk 50 hours into it. 50 or 60 Damn. hours in the last week. Um, Are you doing every side quest? No, I missed a bunch when I didn't take that stupid talk to animal bullshit early on in the game. Ah, okay. I probably missed a few there. But uh, I'm kind of just going about and doing things as I feel. I'm, I'm stuck on a few puzzles. I'm right now stuck in a, a, the stupid portal puzzle that I can't figure out. But I've got my. I'm kind of piecing it together. There's often not enough clues, and so I'll spend hours and hours and hours on a puzzle, and only to hit myself in the head when I finally get it. Nice, nice, cool. Uh, well, you're also doing the Intel GG thing. I've, yeah, I've seen like uh, 30 tweets a day from you. Well, I'm <laughs> trying to keep it to eight or nine tweets per day. Okay. Are those but, all automated on the hour, every hour, or how is this working? <laughs> some of them are I just do at the time. Other ones I'll schedule a, in advance using something like uh, Buffer app. Sure, sure. Uh, but most of them I, I just kind of write at random times. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I'm pretty psyched. I think I'm going to destroy the competition. As long as you lovely people that are watching this go to intel.gg and vote for me, intl.gg, right now with your email addresses while other people are doing their intros. I won't. Uh, I won't over promote because you are a friend of mine. But you have some uh, some stiff competition in the in the ranks of the Intel GG tournament. I think uh, if tournament? I can get past the fan voting system to judged competition, yeah. I will have no problem of rocking it. Okay. I think you've actually got a pretty big fan base on there, more than some of the other people. Like I haven't seen some of these other people really advertising as much as you. So, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll. we'll I'm sure everyone's going to be watching from the role, role play community and, uh, and voting for you. Uh, so I'll let you get back to painting your webcam in. I know it comes very slowly <laughs> with the watercolors. but Hand animated <laughs> webcam. The hand animated. We actually saw some new frames there. It looks good. I'm happy with the, the current image. It looks good. Steven, what's going on with stereo. you? Oh, uh, man. I don't know. Uh, you don't what know. is going on with me? I hooked up my brand new blue snowball mic, so I should sound a little bit different. Hopefully, it sounds good to your earballs. Uh, man, like when did we last talk, JP? Was it has it been like a week? We didn't do anything this past uh, week. It's been since R and D last Wednesday. Uh, no, geez, Tuesday. well, uh, the Tuesday. the only coolest thing that happened to me recently is that Eternal Crusade had a live stream on Friday. Nice. And we had nice. about 2,000 people show up and watch it. It was the first time we played the game live for people to watch, and we're going to keep doing that more. And that was really exciting, so that was lots of fun. Cool. It was fun for me to like combine what has been kind of a hobby and bring that into like my, my professional sphere. Cool. I can, hear, I can hear the ice cubes clinking in that glass. What are you drinking tonight? <laughs> keep it down, you drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. Hey, <laughs> I, need, I need my creativity juice. Don't you, judge me. What are you drinking? This is a uh, an old fashioned. Okay. So Maker's Mark, sugar, water, and bitters. Still, still drinking it with that Maker's Mark, huh? Well, you know, like you don't want to put something like Woodford Reserve into a mixed drink, do you? Kidding me? What are you? Uh, apparently, I'm gonna, you I'm going to teach you not to drink the Kool Aid of of whiskeys. You'll you'll come around. All right, all right. We'll work it out. <laughs> the Kool Aid <laughs> of whiskeys. Of course, we've got the new guy here. We're just going to keep calling him that because he's the latest addition to the roleplay crew. Adam Coble. Yes. I'm Yo, not the new guy anymore. You're not the new guy. You're welcome, Steve. <laughs> the space master of Swan Song. How's it going, Adam? It's going good. It's going good from here in space. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to since, uh, since we last spoke last week? Since Swan Song, uh, I did my little GM stream on the weekend, which was uh, good. It was really popular, maybe more than I thought. I didn't expect people would want to spend two hours watching me crash adobe over and over and over but you nice. know whatever 
Um, yeah, and then just kind of getting ready for the game uh, tomorrow. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, promotional stuff out there. It's really cool. Yeah, the fans are making so much awesome stuff. I'm super excited. Yeah, they've turned your text into like this awesome like data slate that looks really cool. A lot of fan art coming out for it uh, across yeah. the board. Character art. Uh, yeah, somebody posted an in-character wiki, and they're having like in-character arguments as citizens of the planet you guys were on. It's so cool. Nice, nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yep. You shout Learned out to everyone doing that stuff. Uh, it's all over at uh, reddit.com slash r slash jp. But enough about that and enough about what we've been up to. Let's talk about what we're doing tonight. And I'm just going to yeah. let Adam intro that because he's actually going to be DMing the DMs tonight. Yeah, I'm actually a DM. I've come down from, from, from Orbital space. Canada. And uh, I've lowered myself into the dungeon master's chair uh, for today. So, yeah, we're, we're going to, I mean, maybe you've heard there's a new version of Dungeons & Dragons. And we are going to give the uh, starter set adventure, the Lost Mine of Fendelver, uh, we're going to give it a go. So for this, uh, this stream, we're going to save us some time and uh, play with pre-generated characters. Yeah. So... Why don't we start there? Why don't you guys uh, introduce your characters for us? Who wants to go first? And since I'm asking, it's not me. I will go first. Oh, look at Neil, high initiative. There you yes. go, Neil. My name is Basalt Rockseeker. Uh, I am a hill dwarf and a cleric. My background is a soldier, and my alignment is neutral good. Um, Why don't you um, read, so the the new D&D, they're just calling it Dungeons and Dragons, people are calling it 5th Ed or Next or whatever, but the new D&D has some uh, role-playing incentives built in, uh, traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, so if you play these, you can get what the game calls Inspiration, which is kind of like a checkbox, and when you have it on, you can spend it to get uh, advantage on rolls, so to get it, you have to play your character to those things. Why don't you read your traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws for us? All right. My traits are: I'm always polite and respectful. Also, I don't trust my gut feelings, so I tend to wait for others to act and then burn them with fire. <laughs> my ideals are respect. People deserve to be treated with dignity and courtesy while you burn them with fire. Uh, my bonds: I have three cousins. Gundin, Tharden, and Nundo Rockseeker, who are my friends and cherished clan members and help me burn people with fire. <laughs> and my flaws, I secretly wonder whether the gods care about mortal fairs at all. Maybe I should burn everyone with fire. Um, except for the fire stuff. <laughs> Neil, does yeah. your character use a combat shovel? No. Okay. No, my character uses a warhammer. Interesting. Because uh, dwarves uh, use I, warhammers for weapons. I have the uh, character sheet open right here, Neil. It just give a quick glance over it i think that it, there's a combat shovel no my character uses a war hammer <laughs> <laughs> not a member right, of the... you must have talked about this with adam ahead of time excellent um do you have a particular god that you that you worship there basalt or are you just one of those like i love all the gods kind of clerics uh, i'm looking at my background here your domain is life which is the... your god oh god Marth Hammer Duin is the god of, of the dwarf god of wanderers, travelers, and outcasts. Those who mo move among strange lands and foreign peoples. Dwarves who honor him wear his holy symbol, a boot overlaid by an upright mace on a necklace often made of silver and iron. Pretty cool holy symbol. A boot. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. I'm into it. That's cool. It's the holy symbol of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. A boot. The boot. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else on your character, Neil, that we should know about? Uh, my stats are 14, 8, 15, 10, 16, 12 for strength, dex, con, intel, wisdom, charisma. I'm a dwarf. I will use Warhammer, 11 HP, cleric. I think that's pretty much all you need to know for now. Cool. cool. Did, you, did you decide what spells you have prepared? Um, I need to look at the list again because I decided, okay. but then I didn't write them down. So give me a moment. Okay. okay. I like that we got a shot of the character sheets, Neil. Just so we know you're not just making yeah. this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is a big white square. Yeah. It's right? beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. Oh. Steven, you should introduce your so, character. So, I am Milo Tealeaf. I level one rogue. I'm a lightfoot halfling. My background is that I am a criminal. My alignment is, uh, you know, something approximately between law and chaos, between <laughs> good and evil, Okay, you could say. Um, my traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws are as follows. 
I never have a plan, but I'm great at making things up as I go along. Sounds familiar, don't you guys think? Mm -hmm. Also, the best way to get me to do something is to tell me I can't do it. My ideals, people. I'm loyal to my friends, not to any ideals. Everyone else can take a trip on the River Styx for all I care. My harsh bonds... That's Sorry? Harsh, harsh words from a yeah. <laughs> My bond is to Kellyn Alderled, my aunt, who has a farm in Fandolin. I always give her some of my ill-gotten gains, though I probably would not call them ill-gotten personally. It, Fairly gotten. Scare quotes around ill-gotten. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> scare quotes. <laughs> Flaws, uh, my aunt, uh, Kellyn Alderled, must never know the deeds I did as a member of the Red Brands. <gasps> Interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm wearing, what, uh, leather armor and uh, a set of dark common clothes, including a hood. Um, I have an AC of 14, a plus three initiative, and a speed of 25 feet. Um my background, do, do you want me to talk a little bit about my relationship to Fandolin? Um, let's, we can do that stuff when you actually get to Fandolin. Uh, okay, you cool. Can, you can reveal what, what, what you is know your about general it. background? What is the title of it? The title of my background is criminal. Oh, you're criminal? Okay. Yeah, so like that gives me things like uh, I have criminal contacts that I can work to like okay. pass messages and sell stuff that's illicitly gained. So like that. I guess since people are probably watching this and they're interested in the, the new system, what do you have a list of backgrounds to choose from in the, like what, how does the system work, Adam? Yeah. This so is you, all pre-made stuff. We were just basically handed this. Yeah. No, so the way, the way it would normally work in character creation uh, is that you, um, you can uh, pick your class, like normally you pick your race in your class. And then partway through character creation, you have a chance to choose a background. And what's really cool is the backgrounds, they're not tied specifically to um, any given class. So it's not like I'm a rogue who's also a criminal, a cut purse, a bandit. Like, they're, they're spread out. So you could be a cleric who is a criminal or a fighter oh, okay. who is a failed sage. Um, anyone who's interested in watching the whole character creation process, if you go to Steven's uh, YouTube channel, um, right. you can see us hammering our way through that uh, last you, week. You guys have, like, a two-hour video on that, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and I assume I'll, I'll just ask questions so that if people are yeah, interested, yeah. if you guys have questions in the chat, don't spam them. Post them once and I will ask. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not spam. Uh, was that it for your character, Stephen? That's it. Cool. Milo T. Baggins. Milo T. Baggins. That's your name? <laughs> Milo yeah, T. Lee. Absolutely. It Milo should have just T. been T. Baggins. Should have been T. Baggins. <laughs> oh, uh, most people just call me T. Baggins. There you yeah. go. Uh, okay, so I'm playing I'm a... I'm sorry, Stephen. <laughs> I've saved it already. <laughs> I'm playing a human fighter uh, by the name of Gavin Ariat. He is a folk hero background uh, in my alignment, which I just now realized that I'm actually going to have to play an alignment, uh, is lawful good, which should be interesting. Um, yeah. My personality traits uh, is when I set my mind to something, I follow through. Also, I use long words in an attempt to sound smarter. Uh, my ideals are sincerity. It's no good pretending to be something that I'm not. Uh, my bonds are one day Thunder Tree will be a prosperous town again. A statue of me will stand in the town square. And my flaws are that I'm convinced of my significance in, uh, or sorry, of my destiny and blind to my shortcomings and the risk of failure. I have 14 AC, 3 initiative, uh, speed of 30 feet, uh, 10 HP. I use a great sword and a long bow. And I think that's about it. Oh, and I wear leather armor. The longbow and the greatsword, equipment of the overcompensator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This character was kind of interesting in terms of pre-madeness because, like, he's kind of like the the damage dealer fighter. The other mm -hmm. fighter was more of a tank fighter, at least in the yep. pre-made world. So, yeah, for sure. Are for these, sure. by the way, are these PDFs available for people to to watch? No, see, that's the weird thing. Like the oh, sorry, everything in the everything in the starter set is uh, hard copy only. I mean, the starter set's super cheap. It's like 20 bucks, but yeah, there's no, there's no PDFs of any part of it, which is sort of weird. Interesting. But if you want the, the whole rule set, the basic rules are available for free online. So okay. You make your own characters. There you go. Actually, yeah. You can, just, chat. you can make, make your own characters. Yeah. Steven just linked them in chat and uh, cool. for people Thanks, on Steven. the, uh, on the YouTubes, uh, just go over to Steven's YouTube and you can probably find it there in the video. I don't, if, if I remember to link it in the video, then, I'll be impressed. 
so yeah, I guess that's it. I guess we're good. Cool, Adam. If you want to, all right. Away. Well, yeah. Let's let's take a crack at it. Um, so there's some box text because this is a adventure, and box text is a tradition of our people. So I'll read that to you, and then we can begin. So. In the city of Neverwinter, a dwarf named Gudrun Rockseeker asked you to bring a wagon load of provisions to the rough-and-tumble settlement of Fandolin, a couple of days' travel southeast of the city. Gudrun was clearly excited and more than a little secretive about his reasons for the trip, saying only that he and his brothers had found something big, and he'd pay you ten gold pieces each for escorting his supplies safely to Barthen's Provisions, a trading post in Fandolin. He then set out ahead of you on horse, along with a warrior escort named Sildar Hallwinter, claiming he needed to arrive early to uh, take care of business. We've spent the last few days following the high road south from Neverwinter, and just recently veered east along the Tribor Trail. You've encountered no trouble so far, but this territory can be dangerous. Bandits and outlaws have been known to lurk along the trail. So, uh, Gundren Rockseeker is your cousin, right, uh, Basalt? Um, I believe so. Yes, yeah. Gundren Rockseeker is my cousin. Mm-hmm. And your uh, your aunt uh, there, uh, Milo. Uh, she lives in um, in the Fandle. town in yeah, Fandle? On, a, on a farm, probably yeah. on the edge of town. I don't know if she's all that well off. In fact, probably that's why I give her some of my money. Yeah. So Fandolin is a um, it's like a new settlement. It's uh, it's only a few years old. It's mostly like uh, kind of a frontier town. There's no like law there really. It's just people kind of. Scrapping it out in the wilderness. So yeah, I think most people in in Fendlin are are in the same uh, the same state. Um, so you have this uh, this wagon. Um, it's a like a horse drawn uh, wagon um, with all the supplies on it that uh, Gundren has entrusted to you to uh, to take the the village. So where where is everybody? Who's who's riding on the? There's like two uh, space enough for two people on the actual seating of the wagon on the front. Shotgun. So you're okay, driving. So no. No, 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 no. I'm shotgun. Oh, okay. I'm well, sitting in the seat next to the driver. Well, I'll be driving because I have uh, a proficiency of vehicles land. Mm. So is it just the three sense. of us traveling? It is, yes. The three of you and your, your, your equine companion pulling the, uh, the wagon along. Right. I will sit in the back and kick my feet against the, 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 the mud flaps and kind of watch the road disappear behind us. Okay. All right. Um, so the wagon, it's, it's slow travel. Um, I mean, the, the roads, especially on the Tribor Trail, aren't great. They're like logging roads. Um, imagine the, the vicinity to be kind of a like northern um, temperate, uh, lots of pine trees, uh, mountains to the north of you. Um, no sign really of civilization except the, the ragged trail that you're, you're traveling on. Uh, the air is cold. It's colder at night. Um, and you've been on this trail for about half a day. Uh, it's, it's approaching twilight. Um, and as you come around uh, a bend in the trail, uh, past some trees, you spot uh, at first a shape that you realize then is, uh, is the bodies of two dead horses sprawled about 50 feet ahead of you, blocking your path. Uh, each has several black feathered arrows sticking out of it. Uh, the woods press close to the trail here with a steep embankment and dense thickets on either side. What would you like to do? Uh, do I see any wagon wheel tracks or anything like that in the ground? Um, I don't think so. I think only leading, really, like, leading up to this, this place, maybe there's some, uh, hoof prints, but, uh, in the vicinity, unless you want to get down from the, the wagon and, you know, take a real good look around. Is um, it, like, uh, what time of day is it? It's nighttime, um, right? it's approaching night, so it's not, like, twilight yet, but, you know, within an hour or so it'll start getting dark late afternoon so that like you know decent lighting i can't see anything in the woods on either side of us right the woods are very thick um again if you'd like to get down and, and wander out towards them and maybe take a look around you could but it's yeah dense uh, brush and it's up a up a hill too you know what I, I put my hand i i stand up in the seat and i put my hand on uh uh jp what the hell is your name again gavin 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 in it's fact, in, uh, neil, it's in roll 20 neil what's your name also basil Bath salts. Bath salts. Bath salts. Uh, bath Good. Bath salts. <laughs> I, I put my hand on Gavin's shoulder and I say, hey, Gavin, why don't, you, uh, why don't you slow up? I'll slip into the woods and see if I can find anything. Stupendous. I, just uh, I, I hop down without even waiting for the cart to stop and I vanish into the underbrush. Okay. Uh, Gavin, the, the horse uh, that's pulling the cart um, 
smells the the blood of the the dead horses and starts to uh, whinny and and kind of stamp the ground. It seems to be getting kind of nervous. It's not going to bolt necessarily, but it can definitely tell something's something's up. Uh, Yeah, can I... Is the wagon the type of wagon to where if I wanted to turn around, I would have to like walk forward and walk back and then walk forward again? Yeah, Yeah. several turns. I'll I'll start doing that and make sure the horses are, are no longer... Or the horse is no longer facing the the corpses of the his friends, perhaps. Okay. Uh, and uh, I call out to JP, what the hell? Why are we turning around? Calm yourself, Basalt. There is some unfortunate corpses in front of us. You should perhaps go and have a look. Is our good I friend hop is off already the wagon. Out. Okay. And go and take a look. Unfortunate corpses. And the unfortunate corpses. Is this the name of your adventuring company? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, Basalt, while you, you start heading over towards the horses, um, Milo, would you like to attempt to, to sneak off into the, uh, into the woods? I sure would. Okay. I am uh, sure so would. stealthy. <laughs> okay, go ahead and pay a 22, huh? Yeah. Are you fancy? Okay, okay, so where does that plus seven come from? Let's, I want to understand this. So the that- deal is, like, you've got your skills, right? And your skills are related to a primary stat. So stealth is related to dexterity, which is normally plus three. Uh-huh. I also have a plus two proficiency bonus, which gives me a plus five. But because I have expertise, when I make a dexterity stealth check, my proficiency bonus is doubled. So it's technically my plus three from dexterity, plus four from my proficiency bonus, giving me a total of plus seven. Interesting. And so that's three so, different stats that you're pulling from, or three different things that you're pulling from? Two different stats, and then one of them is doubled by a class feature. Yeah, proficiency is an interesting mechanic in this game because it's like, this is literally just how good you are at stuff you are good at. And it, mm-hmm. it goes up as you gain levels, and it's kind of your, your badassness stat. You don't put it's, points in skills anymore. You just choose which ones you're good at and which ones you're not. And then the ones that you are good at, you get this proficiency bonus on top of it. Are yeah, the good ones kind of, the ones that are yeah. like blacked out they're the ones that yeah they're what, the ones what? that have the bit the pip next to them my character's fucking weird <laughs> okay <laughs> i just realized what my character is and now it's kind of weird <laughs> well, okay yeah so so milo you're uh you're i mean you feel like hidden it's it's a bit of like a tangle to get through the the, the brush yeah um but you're you're doing so uh, relatively unseen um Basalt- I, I left i left my short bow in the cart i'm only here with my short sword have you drawn? I mean, it? Have you drawn it, or are you? Oh yeah, I'm definitely have my short sword out. I want I want to like try and sneak through the the brush and see if I can sort of scout around, skirt these corpses, and see if there were, okay. are any you know tracks or any traces of anything nearby. Okay. So while that's happening, um, uh, and Gavin's turning the cart around, um, Bessel, you walk over to where the uh, the horses' bodies are, mm-hmm. um, and you notice there are uh, the they still have they still have their saddlebags uh, on them, but they've been uh, they've been looted. Um, they have knife marks on the bottom. They were looted hastily. Um, How many and horses? There's a had? two, two. Yeah, and there is a uh, empty uh, leather map case lying uh, nearby. Uh, I look for trappings of signs of who might have ridden them. Are there any sigils, any uh, mark tra- trappings of previous owners? Yeah, you actually, uh, you, you don't even need to look for, uh, you know, a, like a brand or anything. You recognize one of the horses. Uh, it's your, uh, your cousin, um, Gundren. It's his horse, Buttercup. Uh, uh-huh. and, and, and Buttercup has met a, an untimely end. Uh, she's got these sort of crude black uh, feathered arrows all sticking out of her. I pluck out one of the arrows and look at it. Is there anything I can discern from it? Um, yes, they are, uh, like I said, they're, they're hastily crafted. Um, they're not, you know, uh, properly like Smith. They have like a uh, slate or obsidian like arrowheads. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Is there a, do you have a skill that you'd like to roll maybe for this? Uh, perhaps insight or investigation. Either, either of those would be fine. I think, I, I, actually, I think insight is for uh, in people's uh, emotions and stuff. Investigation would be inappropriate. Okay, so that's going to be a flat d20 then. Okay. And what is success on a roll such as this? Uh, I think in this case, uh, you'll, you'll just, I'll give you more information, the better you, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> okay, cool, <laughs> never mind. But had no. I rolled, like... Is, yeah. it, is it a varying like a, scale here? Yeah, in, in this case, there's no specific DC. Like, you're not trying to find out a specific thing. It would be like, if you got a 10, I would give you, you know, a 10's worth of information and so on and so okay. forth. But since you got a 1, um, I don't know, these arrows... Uh, they're, he knows they're probably, their arrows. 
Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> arrows. They're tiny spears. Um, they're really thrown by pixies. Yeah. Tiny black pixie spears. Um, These bastards. Pixies took my brother. <laughs> your cousin. Yes. Your cousin. Uh, cousin. Am, am I seeing anything in the brush here? Um, I or think it it's clear. Yeah. So no, I think that as you as you skulk off into the into the brush, um, you hear uh, like kind of stage whispering. You hear like whispering that's not really like uh, they're not making any real effort to stay stealthy. There's two uh, voices uh, in the uh, in the brushes ahead, uh, oh, and they're nice. arguing. What languages do you speak, uh, I Milo? Speak common and halfling. Okay, I'm they're... sure these creatures speak one of those two languages. <laughs> they're they're neither halflings nor speakers uh... of common. Can, um, is only my or Milo? Yeah, Milo is only Milo yeah. hearing this. Yes, yeah, he's the only one close enough. <clears throat> okay, um, and then yeah, Milo, I think you get you get a glimpse while there's still light uh, between some some branches. Uh, there are two. Uh, how tall are you? I am two foot eleven. Awesome. So they're about your nine. about your height. Um, two uh, yeah creatures uh, uh, arguing. Um, they're uh, yeah, they're about your height, maybe a little shorter. Uh, spindly limbs, big heads, pointed ears, uh, grayish skin, and sort of long hook noses. Um, they're uh, they're holding bows, and there's a quiver of the same black feathered arrows sitting between them. And they seem to be arguing. One of them is pushing the other, and they're they're doing that thing where they're arguing while trying to whisper, and it's not really working out so good. Um, but you're you're close enough to hear them. Okay, yeah. uh, they're, not, they're not pixies, Milo. You can tell they don't have wings. Damn it! <laughs> I, there's nothing that like would let me recognize these creatures, would they? Um, I don't know. Are you? Are you? I mean, you're a criminal, right? Um, yeah. Do you spend most of your time in the city, or do you, you wander out into the uh, wilderness? I'm a city guy, really. I, I like the easy, you know, the easy steals of a, yeah. cut, of a purse off of some fat noble walking. No, so huh? it's they're they're ugly little creatures. They look yeah. like. Hideous, malformed halfling babies, or something. So, if they're distracted, oh yeah, then surely I I have a little bit of an advantage on sneaking up to them and stabbing yeah, them. Yeah, you don't even need to roll. You've already made your your mighty twenty two. Yeah, they don't they don't see you. Yeah. So, would you like so, to attempt to shank uh, one of them? Yeah, I would like to uh, shank one of them. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and and do that for me. Oh, well, and, actually... and and tell us tell us what you're rolling and what bonuses and how that works. Let's talk about how backs. So do I do I have advantage on them for being hidden? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that means that I roll two. Uh, so what I'm rolling is two d twenty keeping one. So mm -hmm. because I have advantage, I'm rolling twice, and I'm only keeping the highest. And then I add five for my attack bonus, and I think that's all I get. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then if you hit. Oh you shit. Oh crit. <laughs> nice. So. A normal sneak attack already gives you a bonus. Crit on a sneak attack gives you an additional bonus. Uh, why don't you tell so, us about your damage? So I would normally roll 2d6 plus 3. But because I crit, does that mean I get 4d6 plus 3? Uh, I'm not sure if it gives you just one extra or if it gives you double and then again. Me I think it doubles. Yeah, I think it does, too. It should say on your, uh, your character sheet there. Uh, let me see. I mean, are you talking about on my backstab? It should say, yeah, on your backstab. Sneak attack normally only gives me an extra d6, but the what, the question is, when I double my damage for critting, do I double my pre-sneak attack damage or my pre-sneak yes. attack Yes, yeah. Okay, so then in that case, it's going to be uh, 3d6 plus... Do I do I double the plus 3? So is it 3d6 no, plus 6? No, just, just apply the, the mod as it is. Okay, so that's 10 damage. All right, Tell me, tell me the way that you relieve him of his so hit points. I, um, I mean, I assume he dies. Oh yeah, yeah. I, w yeah. I wouldn't be handing over the narrative to you <laughs> if you're still alive. I, I, I come up behind him and I like put a hand on his shoulder and I step like up just above his butt with my other foot and I stand up on him and I stab my my short sword through his neck. And nice. as I do this, I look forwards and I say. It doesn't matter what you're arguing about. Shut the fuck up and come with me. <laughs> All right. So when you do that, the uh, the other creature uh, immediately begins to shriek at the top of his little lungs. So we all hear uh, this? yeah, Gavin and uh, and and Basalt um, and and the goblins as well. Um, they yeah, everybody kind of springs into action. So there's no there's no surprising to be done here. Um, 
let's roll initiative, shall we? See yeah. in what order everything occurs. I'm going to roll for these little creatures. So Do we have modifiers to our initiative based no, on... No, it's, it's just your... Uh, I think right now, because there's no feats or anything, there's no initiative score, it's just your dexterity modifier. Okay. Yeah. So when it says initiative next to your armor class, that's not what you add here? Uh, oh, if you're wearing if you're wearing heavy armor, it reduces your uh, your armor class. Or uh, sorry, if you're, it reduces your initiative. Um, so my so, initiative is plus three. Am I rolling d twenty plus three? Am I? Is that? Uh, what yeah. is your? Does it say? Well, does your character sheet say uh, I'm negative? Yeah, it totally does. So you're gonna roll roll add your dex, but subtract your uh, your initiative penalty that you have. Oh, so that's a penalty when it says initiative is plus three. Uh, let me take a look. Here. No, because I have heavy. I have chainmail yeah. on my initiative. No, it, so the the character sheet, yeah, it calculates it all for you. So just roll, and then whatever's in initiative there. Okay, so d twenty so like, plus three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> lower well, I mean, or higher already, is better. Higher is better. You you know, basalt, you're already going to be last, so it's <laughs> it's okay that you rolled a three. <laughs> Steven, did you okay. roll? Did you roll a sixteen? I rolled a sixteen, okay. and somehow the rest of you rolled higher than me. Okay. Okay, so me, and then uh, Gavin, and then Milo, and then Basil. Okay. All right. So uh, the uh, the 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 companion of the creature you've just uh, murdered. Uh, there, Milo staggers back, uh, grabbing an arrow from the the, uh, the quiver at his feet, and he he looses an arrow uh, in your in your direction. Um, you're about ten feet from him, so he's going to be at short range. I didn't expect that. So I wasn't prepared. What's your uh, what's your armor class? I need an adult. My armor class <laughs> is fourteen. All right. So the short bow, he's got a plus four to hit, uh, and. I get a ten, so no, ah. he's 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 all panicky and he, he falls over himself and the shot goes wide, just flies kind of over your shoulder. And and this is this roll is just rolling against armor class of Steven, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, now, unbeknownst to the, the the travelers in the road, there are two goblins hiding in the bushes across the road, and both of them uh, do the same. They they fire arrows, one each at uh, Basalt and, and Gavin. Okay. So, Gavin, uh, you get shot at first. Oh, fuck. I have 14 uh, AC. Okay. So, you get hit. Okay. Um, I got a 20, but not a crit. So, you're going to take uh, five damage. Jesus. Okay. And assault. How much HP do you have, JP? Uh, so, it says hit point maximum is 12, but it says my hit dice is a D10. Am I adding my plus two hmm. from Con, or is it just 10? Uh, just take what it says for your hit point maximum there, and then um, we'll explain hit dice when you guys want to rest. They're like a currency for uh, for healing. Oh, okay. And so you do, you do add your constitution, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm at seven. I mean, you're, okay. you're, yeah, your constitution will already be boiled into that. Okay, uh, Okay. so what's your uh, basal? What's your armor class? I got an 18 against you. I think it's his is 18. My it? armor class is 18. Okay, so you also get hit. Both of you take uh, a surprise shot, and you can see the, the goblins now. They've They've stood up, and they've got brushes kind of uh, half covering them, and you both get hit with these these black arrows. Um, and uh, yeah, now uh, Gavin, it is your turn. What would you like I to do? I didn't get any damage. Uh, yeah, you take five. Sorry. Oh, it's just a flat five. Yeah. Um, how is the horse reacting to this? Or, uh, um, and, it's and probably sorry, it's probably going to start start panicking. Like if the goblins attack it directly, it'll it'll freak out a little bit. But right now, it's just very confused. There's a lot of loud noises and. It's not really sure what to do. Um, do I have any idea where this arrow came from? Yeah, you can see part of a goblin sticking out of some bushes. Um, it's about, uh, I don't know, 40 feet or so up, uh, up the incline and, and in, the, in the bushes. Okay. Uh, if I know where the, the goblin came from... Um, yep, you, can, you can see it. I want to use my longbow and, sh and return fire to it. Okay. All right. So it's got, uh, it's got half cover. Um, so it's going to have a bonus to its, uh, to its AC, um, okay. but you can, you can still go ahead and make your attack. So in, uh, in the attacks and spell casting area on this character sheet, is it automa uh, automatically calculating the attack bonus of plus seven for a longbow? Yeah, everything's all, all pre-calculated for you. Cool. All right, here's the roll. Ten. 
All right. Uh, no, you do mm. not hit it. God damn it! Um, Shit roll. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got leather armor and uh, and the uh, the bushes protect them from your shot. Okay. Um, yeah. So you you fire into the bushes and it uh, it goes wide, maybe sticks into a tree. Uh, Milo, what do you want to do? Uh, well, you know, like I feel like it's just me and the one remaining, you know, pixie over here. So I think <laughs> I'm gonna like snarl at him, leap in his direction, and then like stab down at him with my short sword. Excellent. Steven, what's yeah, your max yo. HP? Is it 11 or 10? Uh, me? Yeah. Nine. Okay. And Neil, yours is 11? Mine was 11. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. And now you're at six? six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was just making uh, sure. I have tended to find that in this edition of D&D, especially compared to the most recent edition of D&D, you are way squishier. Ah, oh, 12. Yeah, suck it, pixie. You and your little pixie spears that you throw with your wood spear throwing device got nothing on me. Yeah, unfortunately, a 12 is not sufficient to strike this dark pixie. <laughs> Dang it. And uh, yeah, he, he staggers back. Your, your attack maybe like uh, clashes against his bow, which he's kind of using to defend himself. And then he throws it aside and is trying to pull a, a curved sword from his little goblin belt. Um, and Whoa, yeah, hold on. When did goblins get here? <laughs> That's what that's what Steven's fighting is a goblin. Steven's fighting a goblin. You've I got, thought we were fighting pixies. You've I'm got problems. I, ground, I think ground I'm fighting pixies. a pixie, but uh, clearly I'm actually fighting a goblin. Yeah. Uh, Basalt, uh, it is your turn. What oh, would you like finally. Um, I give a, a hearty shout, leave one alive! And I cast Guiding Bolt at one of them. Okay. Awesome. Mm. What does Guiding Bolt that's, do, Neil? It is, one, it is my OP offensive spell. <laughs> um... I'm just trying to figure out when you cast spells, your attack bonus when you make an attack is plus five. So if uh, if anyone, so we, I mean, I guess I should have covered this, but it seems like kind of D and D one hundred and one. On your turn, you can move and do a thing. Um, if you uh, if you move, unlike some other editions, if you move, you can like move, then attack, and then finish your move. Um, and the doing a thing is uh, you can help someone fight, you can take an action, you can attack, um, or you can cast a spell. It's really simple compared to earlier versions. There's no move minor standard like juggler. Just cool. Doing two things. Okay, so um, I have to make an attack with my spell. So that's d20 plus five, I believe. Okay. Against their uh, their armor class. Uh, it just says. What's the spell called again? Guiding bolt. Guiding bolt. I was looking at flash. Make a ranged spell attack against the target on a hit. Do they take 4d6, Ooh. and the next roll, attack roll made against them, this target before the end of my next turn, has advantage. Ah, so it's like a magic missile plus fairy fire. Cool. Except magic missile is still only d4 plus 1, so it's, it's like magic. a low-level fireball. Yeah, 4d6 against one target is pretty good. Um, level, yeah, I'm down. Okay, so make your roll, and then you can tell us what your guiding bolt looks like. <laughs> oh... <laughs> It doesn't look like anything. <laughs> God is a bad All you. you've rolled is two ones. <laughs> you got a two, no a three. Sorry. Oh my god. Uh, not, uh, all right. Dave, so d- describe describe to us how. What's your god's name again? My god. Tell us my... a bo- tell us a boot to your abandonment. <laughs> Martha Moore Duin is my okay. god, and uh, in my rage uh, over the uh, seeing my cousin's horse. Brutally slaughtered in front of me. Oh, I forget my tenets of faith and my my ideals of the world, and I see bloodlust. And while I do say keep one alive, you can all tell that there's a hint of bloodlust and torture in my voice. Uh, my God hears it too, and so as I go to cast my spell, it just kind of twinkles a few mm-hmm. light stars in front of me and then disappears. Brilliant. So, so I guess Gavin, uh, you see this, you hear him shout and kind of thrust his holy symbol forward, and then some sparkles come out of it. <laughs> so, um, God is... <laughs> Alright, so uh, that brings us back to the second, uh, the beginning of the second turn. So the, uh, the goblins will continue their, uh, their onslaught. Um, I'm gonna... Goblins beat everyone? How many arrows? Goblins are at the yeah. top, yeah. So oh, it's yeah, goblins, it Gavin, and so yeah. Alright, so uh, let's start with uh, the one fighting Milo. Uh, he... Uh, yeah, he's, he throws his bow aside, draws this this wicked scimitar, uh, and and lunges towards you. So now you're in uh, melee combat. Uh, I mean, you were before. You're engaged uh, with this this enemy. 
Uh, oh. And so if you want to escape, if you want to get away without getting an attack of opportunity, it's really simplified in this version. You have to take a disengage action and then make your move. Yep. Uh, so the goblin is going to try and chop your face. It's face chopping sword. So Ain't going to work. D20 plus... Seventeen. Oh. Oh, I'm like, no. I'm, like I'm inverse you're, you're Neil. You're rolling today. really well tonight, man. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wipe on this first. Fucking <laughs> you take. Uh, okay, I'm gonna for the melee ones. I'll roll. I'll actually roll the damage. Watch me get rid of that. Mm, that could kill me. Okay, you take oh. five damage. As expected. Okay, cool. What is your HP at? Four now. All right. So you're you're staggering back. He's swinging the the scimitar. He hasn't landed a blow yet, but you can feel you know sweat uh, beating on your forehead and and the the fear of death kind of looming as this this pixie and his jagged teeth kind of close on you, swinging the scimitar and shrieking. Um, hey pixies! I mutter so, to myself, "This is why I never go in the forests." <laughs> so uh, G- Gavin and and Milo can hear screaming from the forest. Who, who's screaming louder, you or the goblin? Uh. I think the goblin is screaming louder okay. because he's on the offensive, and I'm I'm not I'm not really that worried right now. <laughs> no. Like I'm a little worried, but you know I I still think I got this. Okay, so each of our uh, travelers in the road will receive another uh, another shot from uh, from the goblin bows. So okay. Gavin, uh, your first. Let's see, Jesus Christ, dude! <laughs> All right, so, I have fourteen uh, AC, so that's only a s- double or a single crit, right? Uh, so it, it wouldn't be a crit unless I actually rolled a natural. Uh, oh, okay. That's the only one crit? Off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can. I think you can get uh, feats or there's certain fighter abilities that let you increase your, your threat range, but not, not these little jerks. Uh, okay, so I'll roll uh, damage. So it's a D6. Take three damage. Okay. All right, so yet more arrows kind of raining down from the... Uh, from the nearby bushes, and you're yeah, you're getting pelted with these little arrows. Um, um, okay. Now, can I use my features and traits as well as an attack, or is that only once per turn? Um, why don't you tell us what your your features or traits so, are? So, so what I'm thinking of using is an ability called Second Wind. You have a limited uh, well of stamina you can draw on to protect yourself from harm. You can use a bonus action to gain. Uh, regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. Once you use this feature, yeah. you must finish a short or long rest before you can use it again. So it sounds like it says, uh, what was it? So bonus bonus action takes place during your turn, but it's in addition to your move and your attack or whatever. So I would so, I could use it right now then? Uh, you'd have to use it on your turn. Um, so it is my after, turn though, right? Well, after I, I got to Oh, you got to roll, roll the second the one. Okay. I gotta, let sure, me finish sure. killing Neil and then we'll Sorry, get I you. jumped the gun. Please, That's okay. Please kill Neil, and then I'll be able to You're getting to peppered with arrows. It makes sense. Okay, so, uh, so uh, Basil, you're standing there. There's the dead horse nearby. You're holding your holy symbol aloft. You expected God to smite your foes, and he didn't. And now there's this arrow sailing towards you. Uh, so let's see if it hits you. Ah, it doesn't. Nice. All right, so, so is this God's doing that deflects the arrow, or is it your armor? Um, it's totally my armor. Yeah, so there's just like a loud pinging sound. What kind of armor do you have? Chainmail and a shield. Um, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a loud uh, pinging sound as the uh, uh, the arrow uh, deflects off the rim of your uh, your shield. Um, all right, so now Gavin, you can uh, you can take your action. Cool. Uh, well, I'm gonna use second wind, and I'm also gonna make an attack. So I'll use second wind first. So it's D10 plus fighter level, which is one. Mm-hmm. Please don't fucking roll that. Nice. So I yeah, get 10 HP, mm-hmm. so I'm back up to full. All right. And then I um, will once again use a long bow to try and shoot this thing. Okay. 20 plus 7. Fuck, man. It's the same exact shit I rolled last time. <laughs> All right. So the We're just the ex- worst party ever. How did we ever... <laughs> as soon right. as I miss, I'm just like, inconceivable. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring at your bow. Yeah, like, I'm this just thing- like staring at this bow, and I'm like <laughs> looking at everything very closely. Uh, okay, so yeah, the the goblins uh, continue their 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 shrieking of goblin obscenities at you, um, and and also the firing of the arrows. It's like that scene in Apocalypse Now. You guys are on the riverboat, just getting pelted with spears. Um. All right. So next up then is Milo. Milo. Uh, Milo leaps back and uh, gets in a good parry and then reposts straight at this goblin's neck. Okay. 
Ah, but no, no impalement, I'm afraid. Dang. So this, this, yeah, this goblin uh, isn't fighting just with like pure like savagery. He's not just like beating at you with this sharp implement. Like he, he actually seems to know how to fight. Not very well, but there's there's some degree of discipline to it. Someone has taught this goblin how to wield a weapon. Someone uh, has taught this pixie how to wield a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes, the the pixie continues his his long and prosperous life. Um, basalt here in the, the vacancy of God. Yeah. Um. I. Well, are they close enough for me to charge at them and strike? Uh, they are. Well, what's your movement? Uh, twenty five feet. Okay. Yes. Um, I think. Yeah, they're they're about thirty feet away now. Um, so you can you can move and then uh, move again. You can use a dash action, uh, but you won't be able to attack at the, uh, at the end of that. Okay, how many are left at this point? There are two up on the hill and uh, one uh, that you don't really know about, but you can hear it. It's fighting. Milo. Okay, so can you talk to me about prepared spells versus spells that you can cast per day? Because I've, yeah. I've prepared spells and then spell slots. Yeah, so the way that spell casting works, and this is a little weird, um, you prepare the spells. That's essentially your spell book, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of those, you have a number of slots to spend. Slots is maybe not the best word, because slots is the thing you put something in. But you spend them, basically. So if you cast a level one spell, uh, you expend a level one slot, which is what you did uh, in your last uh, action. Okay, but so I, I don't have to prepare spells to go specifically. I can't say this. I'm memorizing this, this, and this, and three of these. I just say, I right. have these prepared, and then I can use them all on this, or yeah. all on this, or split yeah. it up. That's right, exactly. You're kind of like a, a sorcerer that way. Okay. Um, um, in that case, I will use my other spell slot to uh, cast my spell again. Okay. So you've got another first level slot? You're gonna... Yeah, I have two slots. Okay. So I'm going to do another Guiding Bolt. Okay. Screw your healing, JP. No, I'm full HP, man. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, totally. I'm the only one here in any danger. Yeah. Nice. There we right. go. Nuke that goblin. All right. 4d6. So 4d6 damage. Don't roll a 4, Neil. Nice. Oh. Well, all right. So God picks up the phone and um, smites one of the goblins for you. You can describe it to us. Uh, the mighty god Martha Hamarduin. Guiding bolt. It's a, a shining uh, bolt of light, basically. It's kind of a... Um, uh, what's that crystal shape called? You know, the, the standard, like, you know, diamond on shaped yeah. crystal thing uh, spins at them from afar with a kind of a bluish, whitish glowing light uh, slamming into the creature's chest <laughs> and illuminating him for another full round. Cool. It illuminates his body for another full round. Uh, the, the, yeah, the crystal penetrates his pixie organs and destroys him you guys have advantage on this dead pixie now <laughs> hey maybe maybe gavin will be able to hit it <laughs> i'm sorry that was low that was mean. Uh, quick right, question sure. how long is a round is it six seconds 30 seconds a minute yes yeah, it's six seconds okay yeah cool um, okay awesome basalt nukes one of the goblins uh now the goblins will get to go uh, this goblin has one more arrow. Uh, he's going to shoot it at Basalt for killing his friend. Uh, so let's do that. Oh, Ooh, a crit. God. Oh, oh, no. That's, All you've done is so, just roll. <laughs> well, I know. It's, it's, I, man. Oh, my God, Basalt. Are you about to... What's your HP, Neil? Seven? I've, I've only taken that five damage. I'm wall so hacking. you're down yes. to, like, four HP, right? Oh, well, one. I have so, max 11, so I'm at six. You take 10 damage. Okay, I'm dead. No sweat. <laughs> no sweat. Right, so when you lose all your hit points, uh, you're down, you're at zero. Um, and uh, you will start doing what are called death saves. So uh, every turn, uh, on your turn, uh, you'll make a saving throw. You'll just roll a d20. If it's 10 or higher, you succeed. Um, uh, otherwise, you fail. You can fail three times before your character is actually dead. If you roll a 1, it counts as two failures. If you get a 20, you just leap back to your feet with one hit point. Like, Interesting. Ten or better is nice. That's 55% yeah, that's, chance. Yeah. Um, and then if uh, if another character gets to you in, in time while you're dying, while you're bleeding out, uh, they can make a DC 10 wisdom medicine check, and they can stabilize you. Uh, it doesn't bring you back to one hit point, but it allows you to not make those saves anymore. 
Okay. So they've they've kind of they've kind of old school D and D the old healing saves from four E. So does does he roll that this round or does that start no. next no. round? If you it's if you start your turn with no hit points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the arrow goblin, uh, yeah, he 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 shrieks a cry of delight as he uh, he knocks the, uh, the the dwarf to his knees and then into the dirt next to the horses. Okay. Um, Milo uh, still locked in in deadly melee combat. Uh, the uh, goblin will attack you, and oh, a nine! All right, yes. Ugh, Milo tea baggins. <laughs> so you're to rescue. Too nimble for him. He's he's used to fighting larger, slower foes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a shower of sparks flying between oh, you. Oh 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 just oh! I I say, why don't you pick on someone your own size? <laughs> he doesn't understand you, but he's angry. <laughs> He's angry. You get <laughs> cool. All right, uh, Gavin, what would you like to do? Uh, I see uh, Mr. Rockseeker fall to the ground. Correct. Yes. Yeah. He's lying. Kind can of. Can I? Down. Can I get in melee range to hit this uh, this goblin? My What's speed your... is thirty. Thirty. Um, yeah, you'd have to dash up an embankment. Uh, let's say if you can make a DC ten dexterity check, then you don't you don't have to worry. About it. But otherwise, you can just get. Up. Okay. So my dex is plus three. So D twenty plus three. You got it. Fifteen. Yeah. All right. So no problem. Okay. You rush up the embankment. Uh, you, there's no. Like, you don't have to spend an action to draw your weapon. You can just toss your bow aside. Your yeah, I, I drop it. Like, uh, it look. Uh, I stand up in the wagon. See my my friend fall to the ground. Drop the bow. Like pull out the. Or I guess pull out the greatsword from my back and then just charge up the hill uh, awesome. at this goblin for twenty two. Okay. Nice. All right. And roll damage. Uh, any bonuses or just my normal damage? It's normal damage. He takes 11. Oh, he's paced. How, how do you kill this former bowman? How do you avenge Basalt? Uh, I run at this thing and basically just like lift him up onto the great sword and run him through, straight through the stomach. While just awesome. screaming yeah. as, as loud as I can so everyone knows that I actually killed this. <laughs> like I'm, I'm seeking attention from the yell. To make right, sure okay, that everyone so, realizes what just happened. So Milo, you hear a, a, a shriek from the road, like a mighty human battle cry. We're dead. I <laughs> I heard the dwarf die. I heard my fighter just unleash this howl of death as he got skewered through the stomach. Ah, <laughs> uh, Milo T. Baggins is gonna get revenge. <laughs> well, it's it's your turn. Avenge your fallen comrades, Milo. I, I press the attack. Uh, and as I as I do, I shout, "I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to go kill all your friends too." Nice. Oh, and it's going to be true. true. Okay, so now keeping in mind that that Basalt did uh, admonish you for to keep one alive, uh, you always have the option when you're dealing damage to if you kill something to just instead reduce it to zero hit points and knock it out. So if you'd yep. like to do that, you can. or you could just kill. It. I yeah, would that... like to reduce him to zero hit points. Okay, now. that's more hit points than he has. So how do so you? I knock just like I thing? just like. I'm slashing with my sword. I knock his sword aside. I just like turn my sword to the side and then punch him in the face. Okay. So you, yeah, you break his nose, his yellow eyes roll back in his head and he collapses next to his dead friend. Nice. Uh, I, I pile him over my shoulder and start muscling out Is of the Is this end brush. of combat? I, um, I, I yell, uh, I'm coming, friends! It will, it will be once uh, Basalt stabilizes. So Basalt, you need to make a death save, please. Okay, is that a flat D twenty ten or higher? Yeah, just a D twenty. Nice. Okay, so you're still you're still stable. Um, so Gavin, now you have an opportunity. Do you want to go and try and uh, stabilize him? Totally. I run over to him and, and scream. I will resuscitate you, friend. And then am I just rolling a D twenty? Uh, no. So it's a uh, with DC ten wisdom medicine check. So if you have the medicine skill, you get to add your uh, bonus. I do. Awesome. Nice. Or wait, no, that that would be if it's checked, right? Yeah, it'll have the little guy next I to it. I don't, but I have wisdom, so it's plus. Do I add that or no? Yep. Yeah, you just do add I add wisdom. wisdom regardless? Yeah, whatever it says next to the skill. So if uh, I had the medicine, does it just make it easier? If you no, had it medicine, just... it would add your proficiency bonus, so you get an extra plus two. But as it is, just roll a d20 and add one for your, your gotcha. medicine. Nine. Ooh. Okay, so he's still, he's still bleeding. You can't staunch the, the thick dwarven blood gushing uh, his arrow wounds. I'd like to move over now, and now that I see that Gavin is still alive, I go, Gavin, you're still alive. 
gee willikers. And then I run over next to him and I start helping him. Okay, so what's your, hold on, first of all, what's your movement? It's only 25, right? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah it's going to take, take you two turns to get there, even if you dash. Cause you're, uh, you're how, in how, far, how far away am I from the road? Uh, right now, um, there's the, there's like the hedge, the mm. thicket stuff in the way. So you're maybe like 50 feet, but there's an obstruct. Yeah. And I'm in I'm in difficult terrain too, aren't I? Yeah. So did you get short legs? Grow yeah. Up, yeah. All short. right. Well, yeah. uh, short legs is gonna move and dash. Okay, you're doing it. All right, um, Milo, uh, another uh, or uh, basalt, another save, please. All right. No. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that so Mark one pass one, one fail. Yeah. Yep. One fail. He's got two more. Um. Okay, uh, Gavin, you can attempt to to bring so, him back. Interest, interesting note for our, our viewers here. Yes. Uh, Neil is technically one roll away from death. <laughs> because if he, if he rolls a one... Yes. Hey, why would you bring this up? Why, he dies. What are you doing here, man? He could roll a one. I trust, I trust in Gavin's medical knowledge. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no problem. You can do it, Gavin. Yeah, at this, at this point, tears are just streaming down my face as my friend is... Uh, Your head's covered in dwarven yeah, they're, blood. They're covered in dwarven blood, and I'm trying uh, through all my might to to save my friend. 16? Yeah, do it. Okay. okay. Does that bring me up? Right. It stabilizes you at zero hit points. Uh, if you roll a, uh, roll a d4 for me there, uh, Basalt. Okay. Nice. Four. In four in four hours, you'll get one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so, still unconscious. Oh yeah, but he's not gushing blood anymore. You've managed to crush sure. the bleeding. So there's no difference between being at zero and what I was at negative five. Uh, right. The only difference is that if you have a maximum of like the example they give is uh, if you have a maximum of twelve hit points and you take uh, enough damage to go from zero to negative your maximum, mm-hmm. you die instantly. Okay, so a high-level fighter, for example, would have to get said like negative thirty or forty or fifty or sixty before they die. In one hit, yeah. I mean, they right. can still bleed out in three turns from zero, but of yeah, course. like if a dragon hits you for forty-seven thousand damage, you just blow up. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, is this a good time uh, for a break, Adam? Yeah, it's a perfect time for a break. All right, we'll take our first break and uh, we'll come back. We're planned till midnight Eastern tonight, uh, so we still have a good bit of time left we'll be right back guys thank you so much for watching we'll play one shots D. I I, I want to say 5.0 but it's just it's, D&D it's just D&D now yeah <sighs> we'll be right back after this quick commercial break we'll see you guys then <laughs> 